Why is it harder to take a submarine to the bottom of the sea than a spacecraft into space? Hello, Detailed Engineering. Have you ever wondered why fewer people have visited the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest point in the ocean, than have been to space? While more than 600 humans have orbited the Earth, only three have descended to the 11,000 meter depth of the ocean. It seems contradictory since space is seen as the final frontier, while the ocean is right here on our own planet. But the truth is, the seafloor hides a disaster, a harsh, often underestimated challenge. The pressure. While spacecraft deal with the vacuum, submarines face forces capable of crushing steel as if it were paper. Let's dive into this issue and find out why mastering the ocean depths can be more complex than reaching Earth's orbit. First, what makes underwater pressure so frightening? To understand the difference, we need to compare the environments. In space, the internal pressure of a spacecraft is about one atmosphere, like on the surface of the Earth, while the external vacuum exerts zero pressure. That is, the structure needs to contain the internal pressure, like an inflated balloon. The pressure that the structure needs to withstand is the pressure from inside the spacecraft to the outside, which is just one atmosphere. At the sea bottom, external pressure is immense. For every 10 meters of depth, the water adds one atmosphere of pressure. In the Mariana Trench, with its 11 kilometers of depth, the pressure reaches 1,100 atmospheres. To withstand this, a submarine needs to be built like an armored tank, while a spaceship works more like a sealed plastic bottle. But if the pressure is so high, how come submarines aren't crushed? To withstand extreme compression, submarines use two secrets. The spherical shape and the use of exceptional materials. The spherical shape is the geometry that best distributes forces evenly. In addition to using titanium or high alloy steel heat treated, the submersible limiting factor, which reached the Mariana Trench in 2020, has a spherical titanium hull that is 90 millimeters or 9 centimeters thick to protect only two people. Even so, a single poorly installed bolt or an imperfect weld would result in instant implosion. A spacecraft, like the Crew Dragon capsule from SpaceX, uses aluminum, which is lightweight and ductile with only 2 mm of thickness, reinforced with carbon composites. Its function is to contain an internal atmosphere, not to withstand external forces. But before we continue, let's include a bit of calculation and understand the mass involved. The hydrostatic pressure P in a liquid is calculated by the formula on the screen, where rho is the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G is gravity, which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is the depth. And considering the Mariana Trench, we have 11,000 meters. Calculating this results in 107,800,000 pascals, or 107.8 megapascals, at the bottom of the sea, that's enough pressure to crush a block of concrete into powder. In space, however, the pressure difference is only 5 ampere. This means that, in terms of magnitude, underwater pressure is a thousand times greater than what a spacecraft faces. To be more precise, it's 1,078 times greater. If a spacecraft has a leak, the internal air escapes into the vacuum in a relatively slow process. On the other hand, a submarine at the bottom of the sea suffers an implosion, where water, which is incompressible, invades any crack at absurd speeds. In 1963, the nuclear-powered submarine United States ship Thrasher imploded at a depth of 2,400 meters. That pressure crushed the submarine's hull in a mere 0.1 seconds, reducing it to a pile of metal the size of a refrigerator. Another example was the submersible Titan in 2023, which was visiting the wreck of the Titanic and imploded at an approximate depth of 3,350 meters. According to analyses, that means a pressure of 32.8 megapascals. And what about the materials? Why don't we use titanium in spacecraft? The thing is, in space, every gram counts. Using titanium, which is stronger but a bit heavier, would make the launch unfeasible. That's why spacecraft prioritize lightweight materials like aluminum, 
carbon composites and thermal ceramics. Deep sea submarines, on the other hand, sacrifice weight for strength. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like and turn on the notification bell. And if you find our content interesting, consider becoming a member to help us keep producing content here on the platform and to be mentioned in our videos. And if you're interested in knowing the courses we recommend, scan the QR code here on the side or check the link in the video description. To have access to various opportunities to develop several skills that will make you stand out in your career. Did you know the water pressure at the sea bottom? Would you like to go down there in a submarine? Leave it here in the comments because I want to know. On the side, there are two videos you should watch to expand your knowledge and curiosity. To support us, please like, subscribe, enable notifications and consider becoming a member. That's it, engineering fans. Big hug. See you next video.